I mentioned in the last lecture that we will talk a little bit more about how you would figure out the amount of inversion charge. It comes in units of coulombs per square centimeter, coulombs per area at the interface. There is no inversion charge below threshold. And when you get to the threshold voltage, you still have no inversion charge. You get one nanovolt more than threshold voltage, you might start to see your first inversion charge carrier show up. But at threshold, Q inversion is zero. That's a useful thing to take advantage of. Let's use the definition of capacitance, Q equals CV, to relate the inversion charge to the voltage. If the inversion charge is zero when gate voltage equals the threshold voltage, you're at threshold, then we shouldn't write Q inversion is the oxide capacitance times the gate voltage. That would be wrong because the inversion charge begins not at gate voltage equals zero. It begins at gate voltage equals threshold voltage. So you better write it this way. Inversion charge is the oxide capacitance times gate voltage minus threshold voltage. So it's the delta voltage. The reason for the minus sign is because capacitance has to be a positive number. On Q equals CV, Q is just a positive amount of charge, and V gate minus V threshold will always be a negative number. That's how you can relate the inversion charge to the capacitance of the oxide. Typically, Q inversion is coulombs per square centimeter, and oxide capacitance is typically in farads per square centimeter. There is an unusual notation. You'll see it all over the place in the textbook, this T sub OXE, and this C sub OXE. And I think you have a good sense of what T sub OX is, the thickness of the oxide layer, and what C sub OX is, it's the capacitance of the oxide layer. But sometimes you see this little E after the OX. That means something slightly different. We call it the electrical oxide thickness. Why is it called electrical thickness? Well, there is a physical thickness to the oxide. You know, where the silicon dioxide begins is very clearly a, a, a place. But the semiconductors on either side, the gate and the substrate, are only as conducting as the charge carriers inside of them will acknowledge. If charge carriers refuse to go someplace in the semiconductor, then you can't really call it conducting. And so the effective thickness of the oxide is modified by the charge carrier distribution. And we've seen this picture before. What, what does the charge carrier distribution look like around an edge? We talked about it with the PN junction. It's similar story with a MOS structure. I mean, if you're going to have oxide here and then gate, then inside the oxide, you will have no charge carriers. The gate, being a high conductivity semiconductor, will have a very thin region of space charge compared to the substrate, which is a lower conductivity semiconductor. Consequently, as far as electricity is concerned, the thickness of the oxide is more. And so T sub OXE accounts for these added lengths. And then C sub OXE is the resulting capacitance. An ideal capacitor is what it is, but the MOS capacitor includes then extra capacitance from the inversion layer and from the gate, which is probably polycrystalline silicon. And you know, they're in series. So use the series combination of three capacitances. So the capacitance of the polysilicon and the capacitance of the inversion layer should be added in their one over form to the actual oxide capacitance. That becomes significant when the oxide layer gets very thin. If it's less than 10 nanometers or so, uh, this is then a very significant effect. Even the capacitance of the, the polysilicon gate. We would like to think that that's just coated on the surface and so that the capacitance of the polysilicon gate is infinite, but it won't be. We've left out of our discussion these other sources of space charge in the, the MOS capacitor. The oxide itself can, within it, have charge due to defects in the oxide. At the interface between the oxide and the semiconductor, you have a change in material from silicon to silicon dioxide. Unreconstructed bonds can become charge centers, interface traps, uh, you call it. So that's charges that you have at the interface due to the interruption in the otherwise nice crystal lattice. So I want to set you up for problem five. I'm going to sketch out the a graph that's included in that problem statement. It's a graph of charge on the surface in coulombs per square centimeter versus the voltage 
of the gate minus the voltage of the flatbed. So there's an offset. When this vertical axis is zero, you are at flatbed. And at flatbed, there is no charge. So the curve, whatever you have, should go through the origin. So it looks like this. You have this straight line when it's in negative territory. And then we have this curvy part. And all of a sudden, it becomes straight again. This happens at one volt. So what you want to do is identify our regions. First of all, I just identified for you that right there, the origin is flat band. When V gate minus V flat band is negative, you are in accumulation. When you go through flat band, you enter into depletion. At one volt, it stops being curved and leveling off and starts going linearly again. That is where you have your inversion. So the one volt point is the threshold voltage in this problem. Charge in depletion is proportional to the width of the depletion region. At alpha is for proportional to. Uh, we have slopes. There's two really important slopes here. Uh, so the slope, dq by dv gate, because that's the only voltage that's actually changing. Flat band doesn't change it. So that's the slope. It physically means minus the oxide capacitance. Well, what up here, what do you have? You have the same thing. It doesn't matter if you're in accumulation or inversion. The slope is approximately minus the oxide capacitance. And I say approximately because there are those other contributing factors that I just got done talking about. There's the setup. And it's a P-body, so when V-gate is less than V-flat band, you're in accumulation, and when V-gate is greater than V-flat band, you're in depletion, eventually de inversion. 